Okay, some of the things I would like to talk about about things a young mother should know. Um, one of the first things that um, I learned from my mom was that um, um, I would say it, it's kind of like how you wrap up a, a mummy <laughs> oh. because like they, they jerk and they wake themselves up. So when you, you wrap them in a blanket, you, they're real secure mm -hmm. because they have always felt secure in, in the mother's womb mm -hmm. before their birth. So that's one of the reasons why you you uh, mm -hmm. tight. And the other thing was that um, when they're in the womb, but uh, the 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 fluid inside um, the amniotic fluid that's inside where they're growing, mm -hmm. it's it's like a swishing swishing sound. So. Also, that when you try to when you put your baby to sleep, as you're holding it against you, um, preferably on your um, left side, above your heart, towards your heart area, and you can kind of hear that thumping, the beat of the heart, and then, and as you uh, rub in their back, you make that sound, shh, 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 because that's what they hear in the in the fluid. And uh, that's how you put your baby to sleep. Oh, yeah, and then, um, and then the, uh, another thing too was uh, there's a lot of babies that get colic, mm -hmm. and uh, that makes them ikimistiki mm -hmm. with colic. So I guess in the old days they used to um, use a piece of rawhide, and they would wrap it in material, mm -hmm. and then they would put it behind the baby's back. Or, or in the blanket, and it that rawhide, and it kind of straightens their back, and that would help prevent colic. Oh. And also, um, uh, the modern day theory would be that same idea is to like use a receiving blanket, and you fold up another, another receiving blanket like in a square form, mm -hmm. and and put it down there. It would be right in the middle of the blanket, and then you lay the baby on that blanket, and then you you fold it up or cover the baby up with it, and that that's supposed to help the colic too, and also too that uh, the using a cradle board mm -hmm. because of that that um the firmness of the board has a lot to do with like you know being that strengthen their their spinal cord, and also um. For the colic, and then uh, for security purposes, uh, on the cradle board, with that that rawhide, kind of crisscross it all the way across. After they're wrapped in their blanket inside the cradle board, and you crisscross the the well, the ones I have have buckskin on it, oh. and then and then they can they can sleep, and you can almost prop it up anywhere, and that's. That's another 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 thing that I learned about the security and about the colic and was the the, the cradle board. And then um, also I was told that you never touch a um, a baby on the top of its head. There's that soft spot because it's um there um, it's still their head the cranial is still forming together. And once it closes up, that soft spot disappears. And um, I was always told never to touch that soft spot. Um, and it's very sensitive and it's fragile. on top, and how it fuses together and then it goes away. And also, um, I learned from my mother that um, she told me one time, Miss Nikki, no, don't your kids, Nikki nods you in their cribs. You, Nick, you know, I'll come out of the bedroom and you leave them in your crib. So when you leave, you put the stick by them. And she made me a stick. It And it's, um, she stripped all the bark and at the top it's kind of shaped like a crutch. 
Oh. And it's all stripped. And she said, you put this by their crib. Guma spirits These spirits are scared of sticks, she told me. She said, always put the stick by your baby's crib if you're going to leave the room. And then to this day, I still have that, that stick. I've used it on my kids. I've used it on my grandchildren. Um, so that's another thing that I, that I learned. And then um, about the, uh, their, their navel cord when they're born, how it's clipped, clipped in the, in the, in the hospital. They put that, um, that, like that clear button looking thing on her. Mm -hmm. And you always have to keep it clean. Mm -hmm. um, you put, uh, well, back, back in my day, I don't know about the olden days, but they used to, to me, uh, alcohol would sting it. But it goes on the gauze and you kind of put it around the, the, the belly button that's, that's protruding from its, its belly button mm -hmm. until it dries up and then it falls off but you have to always keep that clean because that's uh, an easy way for germs to enter. Yeah. And my mother always told me, make sure you clean it. And um, I think what I used was just, um, you, I would clean it with Vaseline. Oh. But I, I don't think I ever used alcohol to me because to me it would sting. Mm -hmm. So I, I never did use that. And then once it, once push boy it's in, it do uh, Ikimano for a heia, a lizard, na, for a turtle, for a boy, and you put the navel in there, and uh, <clears throat> the the lizard uh, represents um, for a girl, for a female, is that um, they can adapt to any situation. So, and according to studies, that's I guess that's how a lizard is. Uh, Described yeah. as they can adapt any anything, a lizard. But the the he done the this uh turtle, the the um the the turtles are slow, and who are Mickey or it's done males, they take time to think about things. Mm -hmm. That's why the turtle uh, is represented for a male. Is is uh, the the way I was taught. So Noah. Yeah. And that you know they're wise. Yeah. The turtles are wise, and they take their time. So that that's um, that's why the turtle uh, represents the male version. And then um, <clears throat> they once you beat it, beat those. You supposed to put them on, pin it on their back. You know they don't dig around for things because they will say they're looking for their belly button. So that's why they always uh, pin it on their back. So I don't know if you ever noticed, there's a lot of people, nowadays I see like on their gore dance blankets, um, maybe their dance outfits, they put they put that belly button or that beaded lizard or turtle on the, their back. Mm. Oh. So anyway, that's uh, about, about the, the um, but my personal view, of, of this whole version of the, of the turtle and the um, lizard, my my personal view is that um, it represents our life that was given to us from our mother, and um, so you treasure your life, and and to me that that's what that's my my personal view of that when the belly button's put in this lizard or the turtle. That that's. My my personal view of it, mm -hmm. and I was also instructed, whenever back in the olden days we used to wash our babies' clothes in the old time washing machines, with the ringer and all that, and we go outside and hang them on the line, yeah. and we used to always have to bring go get your baby's clothes off the line, never leave them out there overnight, because that's when the spirits roam at night, and. You go get your baby clothes off the line. That was another thing that I learned about about um, as far as a, a newborn baby. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even 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 to this day, uh, even if it's your child's clothes, um, until they reach an adult, I still tell 
Uh, well, of course we have all we have dryers now, mm -hmm. but in the olden days, you know, it's up to the when they reach adult age, then go we'll get your children's clothes off the line, yeah. because um, you know that's when spirits roam at night, and it, it, you know spirits there there's good spirits and bad spirits, mm -hmm. so you gotta always be um, looking out for protection for your children. And then also another thing I wanted to share was um, on the Indian names, mm -hmm. I was told that if you have a girl, the girl's name comes from the father's side mm -hmm. and vice versa. If you have a boy, it comes from the female side of the family. Mm -hmm. But nowadays uh, that's really changed. Mm -hmm. They You just pick, uh, I guess, whoever you want your child to be named after. But that that's the rules. Yeah, yeah. The rules and regulations of the CF Cheyenne CFR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so that's all I would like to share about um, about um, a newborn baby and some of the things the young mother should be aware of. Yeah. And the other thing, this is the second thing I would like to share with you is uh, mm -hmm. my dad told me the story. Um, one day we were coming back um, from Lame Deer to Busby, and um, we used to stay in Reed District, and he said, I really miss this muddy hall, and it burnt down quite some time ago, that muddy hall, I don't know, he probably went, even thought about then, yeah. but there was a, there used to be our dance, community dance hall, and it's located um, across from that Rosebud subdivision mm -hmm. on that flat, oh. and we had that burned down, but my dad told me that uh, every Christmas, he said that all all the men and young boys would go, I guess back in those days on their wagons, there must have been like, like they were kind of like, had not the metal wheels, but kind of like a, a bar where it would slide, mm -hmm. like a big sleigh. Oh, okay. With, and with horses, then they would go across, across the creek there up in the hills, and they would go look for a Christmas tree for that, that community hall because they always had a uh, Christmas powwow there. And he told me, he said, um, that when they would go out, while well, they set a day and a time and everybody would come to the hall, and then they would uh, across the road, I mean, across the creek there. Um, I'm sure there's, there was roads or bridges there. Mm -hmm. And they would, they would look for a Christmas tree and then once they found the tree they wanted to cut down, he said um, th certain guys that were with him, and I think one was, I think he named a Nakunka. I don't know what, what his name, English name is. I think it was Henry Little White Man. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, and he would light a cigarette and, and put it down. You know, and of course, you all know in our culture ways, tobacco is sacred. Mm -hmm. And that the tree they were gonna cut down, and um, and he would he would say, your brothers and sisters are waiting for you. Uh, they're gonna dress you up, and you, and you're gonna bring happiness to everybody that that's gonna see you." And so, which means, you know, they were, they were, it's going to stand by itself and they were going to dress it up, which means with the Christmas ornament and that it was going to bring joy to the people. So, my dad said once they did that, and he said they would sing a song, and I, I, I don't, I don't, he didn't sing the song for me, but he told me they would sing a song, mm -hmm. then they would cut the tree down loaded on that wagon, then they would go back down to the hall. Then when they got to the hall, all the the women were there and their the children and which would be mostly females because they took all the males with them. Mm -hmm. And she he said, when we we would pull up those old ladies and they would just clap and those little kids would just holler and you know. So anyway because the, the, that's what they were bringing, 
spring to take into the hall. So once they got in there, they made that stand for it. And Mr. Ame, I remember they would put a coffee can and put that in there, and then they would tie um, two planks like a cross, mm -hmm. and then they would t put that co coffee can and put the tree in there, tie it down with wire, and then always made sure there was water in that can because that's their to keep it alive mm -hmm. it had to have water and as we all know water is life yeah. so that's why they always made sure there was water in that coffee can and then once he said we 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 got up ready for them to put the ornaments on it was up to the the females and the little the little kids they would decorate it and I guess back then they used to make their own ornaments and I remember making some they would, I don't know where they would get like um, red paper and green paper. Mm -hmm. They would make circles and, 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 and put them together and they would make a, like a chain. And then that's what they would wrap around the tree. They would pop popcorn and, and it could uh, string it together with a needle. And popcorn was on that. And they would put lights on there. And then um, anyway, when they had the powwow, and after the powwow was over with, they would take the ornaments off and everybody got some of the cedar oh. from that tree and they would take it home and to burn and bless their homes. And I always thought that was um it was a real that sounds like a real good tradition. I mean I mean it, there's a lot of meaning to it. Mm -hmm. Uh spiritually, you know, and I um to this day I have never ever heard it done. And if, if that's what our district did, you know, um, and there's hardly, like, all the old people are gone to really reiterate, you know, is this what happened? But it came from my dad because we lived there for a long time, and we finally, we finally moved to Wapua Madania. Eh? Oh. But I still claim to be a redistrict. Oh, no. I would say, I would say um, I'm a pre-district. But not so only the Nakia, because they're not Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, that's it. That's another thing that I wanted to share with you. Wow. And I hope this information uh, somehow somebody gets something out of it, and I'm happy to share it with you. Thank uh -huh. you.